Hello everyone, this is Nitpicky Nerd and this is part 3 of my review of episode 12 of season 3 of Star Trek Discovery. So there were continuity issues as always, like when the Admiral said that he never ate an apple and yet they have a flying forest right in Starfleet headquarters itself, right next to where he sits. So maybe it's an alien forest, maybe it's not compatible with human DNA or whatever. Like I can always come up with excuses if I really try. But why should I bother when the show is not doing that? The show doesn't care, the writers don't remember their own writing even from a few episodes ago. And the fact that Michael can contact her mother, who is on a Nivar, even though previously they said that subspace relays are all down and they cannot contact distant planets, they had to spore jump there to talk with them. They couldn't talk with them by subspace. And suddenly she can send it with her own com badge. And the fact that she has a phaser on her and yet she doesn't bother to just uh, stand that guy in the corridor or use a Vulcan nerve pinch and he's standing with his back to her. And yet instead of doing those uh, things which should make sense, instead she calls out to him, gives him a warning and then he turns around and then she jumps on him and strangles him with her legs and then he stabs her with a knife in the leg and then she pulls the knife out which is not recommended by the way you know even dr crusher said that in the episode inner light she said that when someone is stabbed it's not always a good idea to pull it out right away and of course she pulls it out and then uses the phaser which she had to seal the wound and then she's totally fine and can walk normally if you just uh, seal off the skin above that wound then uh, you're totally healed apparently so a lot of silly moments like that and uh, I talked in part one of my review about the whole negotiation that makes no sense. Why would the Admiral refuse it outright? Why not at least waste the time of the villain to buy some time for his people to organize or get reinforcements or whatever uh, he needed. So waste her time in negotiations but he, he just flatly refuses to accept her offer of an alliance. So you know this kind of makes the villain looks like the hero and the hero look like the villain and that's often the case with this show for some reason so the villain the big plan of the villain is actually to offer an alliance and a peace with the federation and then the admiral says you know it could have worked but uh, you're too evil for my taste like you committed a lot of atrocities and all of that so only if you resign and agree to stand trial then i will agree with your alliance and so that means all the other points are fine like everything else he would agree with everything she offered he would agree with his only problem is with her personally and because of that because of one person the fate of one person is willing to sacrifice the whole future of the galaxy so i think you know in big matters like that when you're dealing with you know politics on a galactic scale Maybe it's a good idea to look at the big picture and how many millions of people you will actually help and not the fate of one person. So in such a situation I'm not even sure he did the right choice. And also it's funny how he had absolutely no problem with the evil Emperor Giorgio being part of the Discoverer's crew. He never told her that she has to stand trial even though her crimes were also very documented. She committed genocide, she killed a bunch of people, she's uh, sadistic, she tortures people in that uh, spore box and all of that. All of that is totally fine. The Admiral never had a problem with Emperor Giorgio. Remember, they interrogated her, they knew all about her, and yet they allowed her to stay on the Discovery, which was uh, supposed to be their most important asset now, and they were totally fine with letting her stay there. But when Osira comes, suddenly, oh no, you're too evil for us, so you cannot uh, join the Federation in an alliance. No, that's too nasty. I guess it kind of makes sense because the Federation was always kind of uh, goody-goody, they were always kind of holding to their ideals more than anything, often not in a very pragmatic way, and so maybe it kind of fits that. But uh, why did he even agree to negotiate with her if that's the case? If he's never going to agree to anything because of her personally, even if the offer is reasonable, as he said it is, then what's the point of even meeting her? Unless it's to waste her time. But if it's to waste her time, how come we don't see Starfleet actually doing something, planning a rescue mission to save the Discovery or something? We don't see any of that. And also it's hilarious how the plan of the villain makes no sense if you think about it. If all she wanted was to negotiate with Starfleet, why couldn't she do it? from a safe distance or meeting in a neutral location or something and just keep the discovery hidden in your own territory where it will never be found. So discovery is such an important asset and you said you have the capability of uh, figuring it out yourself that Starfleet cannot but you can and so why not keep it for yourself and keep it at a distance so the Starfleet will not be able to free it and then come to Starfleet separately and then negotiate your uh, alliance offer and all of that and then you can offer to bring back the Discovery and its crew and all of that so 
Why did you have to do it right away in the first day that you have the discovery? What's the rush? Like at least figure out how to use the spore jump to get away from there if you need to. So you gave that scientist guy, that one in the wheelchair, you gave him literally like a few minutes to figure it out. This is like the biggest piece of technology that no one else in the whole galaxy ever invented again after Stamets. And you give that one guy five minutes to solve it and you say we might have to get out of here pretty quickly if negotiations don't work and so uh, figure it out in five minutes so <laughs> are you kidding me like how ridiculous is any of that and what did that guy do instead of uh, controlling stamens because stamens has been controlled by a mind device and so you can use stamens to jump as you just did previously they had just used stamens to jump there so they can do it again they don't have to learn how to do it without him yet because they have him now so what's the point of releasing him from those restraints and talking with him to figure it out if you control him anyway? So why not keep him hooked up to the mind device in case you need to use him again, but instead they remove him and they free him from it while they are in that dangerous spot of possibly being attacked by Starfleet and she's told him, be ready to jump out of here, so why do you release Stamets? So none of the action of any of the characters make any sense if you actually think about it. And that's really annoying to me, that's an insult to my intelligence, that's like, I, nothing makes sense, every minute there's something stupid. And that's what's pissing me off about the show, like, I don't mind occasional silliness, I don't mind a lot of things I could have forgiven, but not the lack of intelligence by all the characters. And then uh, Stamens himself later demands to spore jump back to that planet in the nebula, and he seems to think he can do it all by himself from the spore box, even though we saw previously that they always had to activated from the bridge as well so it wouldn't even work even if michael agreed with him so why the hell is he fighting her for and all of that and then she ejects him out of the window to be picked up by starfleet so that osira cannot find him and all of that and the the way that scene was edited also was kind of badly done that you don't even realize what's going on because they kind of show a phaser appearing in her hand because she has that little device in her sleeve which materializes a phaser which, by the way, is kind of a cool shot. It kind of reminds me of all kind of computer games in the Star Trek universe I used to play, uh, like uh, Elite Force. And in that game, you also had the ability to kind of materialize different weapons. So that was kind of cool, and so it reminds me of that. So I don't mind that. This is the far future, so it would make sense for them to materialize any tools or weapons they might need and not having to carry them all the time. So I guess it's been stored as energy in that device. And so I don't actually mind that. That is a cool idea, but the way... They showed it in the scene. At first I thought it was in Stemmen's hand that it appeared in because uh, we saw it through the force field and he was the one that the force field was covering. So it looked as if it appeared in his hand, but it was in her hand and we saw it from the other side of the force field. So why edit it like that, that it makes no sense what's even going on? And then she uses the phaser to blow a hole in the window so that he will get sucked out of the window and fly to Starfleet headquarters, covered in that force field. So anyway, when the Admiral finished his negotiations with the villain, why doesn't he simply arrest her? If she's so bad, if she's so evil, if she's so despicable that he cannot form an alliance with her because she has to stand trial, then why don't you arrest her right there? And you know, it's not as if she came there on a diplomatic mission with a white flag, in which case I guess it's against protocol to arrest the diplomatic messenger or whatever, but it's not the case, she came there hostily, she came to attack the headquarters and that's what she's going to do in the next episode i'm sure and she kidnapped your crew took your ship hostage and all of that and so you're under a war situation it's not as if she came there with a white flag as an ambassador of goodwill and a diplomat and all of that so you can actually arrest her in this situation so why don't you why do you waste time negotiating with her when you should pull out a phaser and just stun her and just take her captive and just uh, arrest her and then use her as leverage to get your crew back so why is no one thinking about any of this why is nothing making sense in this whole episode and it's just laughable, it's just, it's as if the show is a parody, it's as if the show is deliberately being stupid to be funny, so I kind of find it entertaining indirectly. And uh, also in this whole episode we don't actually see what's going on on that planet, and uh, they said they only have one day to live, and they're about to die, and yet we don't see them at all, we don't know what's going on on that planet, I guess it will all be in the next episode after they finish dealing with Osira in the first half of the episode, I guess they'll come back to that planet and finish that storyline. And I will make a prediction video about what I think will happen. I probably will have to kind of invent dumb ideas that I, I'm unable to come up with. I will have to do that to make an accurate prediction. Because, you know, if I want to guess what will really happen, I will have to think of something that I'm unable to think about. So uh, I will leave that for my next video. So let me know what you think and we can discuss it in the comment section below. And I will see you all next time. Bye bye.